Dudes Behind the Foods listeners, this podcast is brought to you by Fabric Life Insurance. Pa 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 pow! As the weather warms up and flowers start to bloom, it's the perfect time to take a fresh look at your financial planning. If you've been meaning to get life insurance but have been putting it off, now is the time with Fabric by Gerber Life. Fabric was designed by parents for parents to help you get high quality, surprisingly affordable term life insurance policy in less than 10 minutes. You could be offered coverage instantly with no health exam required. Protect your family today with Fabric by Gerber Life. Apply today in just 10 minutes at meetfabric.com slash dudes. That's meetfabric.com slash dudes. M-E-E-T fabric.com slash dudes. Policies issued by Western Southern Life Insurance Company. Assurance company not available in certain states. Prices subject to underwriting and health questions. Liquid IV is the category winning hydration brand fueling your well-being and their hydration multiplier is the one product you're missing in your daily routine, okay? Now, let me tell you, it's festival season and planning for a faster, efficient hydration is essential. Liquid IV has you covered while you prep before, power through to the headliner, and recover after the weekend, all right? We all know how it is when you get a little crazy with your buddy, David, so, and then you're feeling it the next day. That's why I love me some Liquid IV, you know, it's a convenient packaging and it makes me feel great on a daily basis. They got all types of flavors like sea berry, strawberry lemonade, uh, lemon lime, the best. So grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code DUDES at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code DUDES at liquidiv.com. David, so do you believe in aliens? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yes, I do. Me too. Because it never said in the Bible that there wasn't aliens. I 100% agree. And if God is the creator of all things in the universe, then why the fuck can he make a fucking alien? I think, you know, people that are so religious that they don't believe in aliens. That don't make sense. That's ex- you're, you made that exact point because they, they'll say, no, God made us in his image. He never talked about whatever other image, but I'm like. He didn't have to tell us everything. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, really? God made us in his image? I've seen some alien-looking motherfuckers in this world. <laughs> All right? You're hideous. And it's, it's silly to think that out of the huge, gigantic universe that we are barely even a fraction of, that there's no other living type of anything I'll tell you this. There. In the last year or so, right, I don't know what the fuck is going on, mm-hmm. but there's always these clips of, like, UFOs, these weird mm-hmm. sightings. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the part that makes me a little uneasy is that nobody is saying, like, definitively, oh, this is what it is, and it could be debunked. They're just like, I don't know. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> that makes me uncomfortable. No, I mean, the government literally came out and was like, yeah, no, there's UFOs. Like, we don't know what we don't know what that is. There's aliens. Like, they were, like, admitted it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it wasn't a big deal because I don't know what the fuck was going on. Like, no one was really talking about it, but they literally put out a statement and was like, yeah, no, no, there's, there's UFOs. <laughs> <laughs> <Just> hella casual. <laughs> why? Why did they do that suddenly? Um, I forget why they all of a sudden decided, hey, let's put out this information that we've had. But um, it was like they admitted it. They were like, yeah, uh, it's facts. I feel like it's just because, like, tech now, everybody has a camera on them. Mm. People are recording things. It's like, you know what? They're going to know either way. So might as well just let them fucking know. Yeah. And if you're going to talk about uh, religion, I actually did for my eighth grade science project a report on the Bible saying that aliens exist. Because there are people that believe that um, aliens are actually... Angels that have gotten cast out of heaven and are in between heaven and earth. All right. So there are some scriptures that reference aliens that like aren't in heaven anymore. And they're like, you know, they visit earth or whatever. And some people think that that when we talk about aliens and seeing UFOs, those are actually just aliens. Because God said he made 
the Bible says humans were made in his um, in his image, right? But no one knows what the fuck aliens look like. So you just in eighth grade? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck are you talking about? I liked doing different shit. I never thought about shit like this in the eighth grade. <laughs> The eighth grade was me trying to make sure I don't get jumped. Like all the time. They're just always trying to beat up people. And I'm like, oh God, just stay quiet. I ended up getting a C. You know why? Why? Because I didn't listen to her directions. Miss Pickens, I, I sent in my initial draft and I, I totally wasn't paying attention to her note. Um, maybe this is the early ADHD. <laughs> but she told me, or her, one of her biggest notes was, um, Stop writing it like it is a creative thing because I attacked the whole thing like I was like one of the X File agents, like mm. like Scully and Mulder, and I was doing a whole like, oh, okay, <laughs> classified information. This is Agent Chantharongsu, right? You turned it in and it says Agent Scully. On it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like Tim, how am I supposed to know? Scully and Chantharongsu. <laughs> she's like, she's like, hey, don't don't approach it like it's like it's a work of fiction. Like this is a science project, and I totally ignored it and continued to do what I did. And she's like, dude, it's a great. Like your research is great, your references are great, um, your presentation is great, but you didn't listen to my initial note. I was like, oh. You're like, now I'm going to do drugs. Yeah, now I'm going to quit school and become an internet person that talks about his penis all day. <laughs> <laughs> At least you fucking put effort into your schoolwork. I never did any of that shit, dude. I was the worst. There was just, they used to do this thing in high school called the all-school run, mm -hmm. and they did that every whatever semester or some shit. And that was just a time for me to fucking just leave the campus because <laughs> they would start it. <laughs> on the track, but instead of running around the track, you would go around the whole field. Where around the whole field, there was a back entrance that would just, you could just leave. Mm. And they would always see me with my backpack and all my clothes, none of my PE clothes. And they're like, are you ditching school? I'm like, yes. <laughs> I'm like, you know, we're going to mark you for that. I'm like, I know. And I would just walk home. <laughs> I, I got straight A's up until high school. And then- um, You had straight A's? I was a straight A student. Um, oh. with, with the exception of like the occasional B or C- like, you know, the older I got, the more I would fuck up a little bit. But I was pretty much like, if not 4.0, like 3. Point, like a, almost a straight A student up until high school. That's when I first started going to like a public school. You know what I'm saying? Especially when I started going to Paramount. Sophomore year, started to have a little more fun. You know what I'm saying? Dicked around a little more. What's um, it like having straight A's? I've, I've never known what that elite feeling was. Never, ever? Never, dude. I was pretty good scholastically. Um, I was oh. definitely like one of the smartest people in my class. Scholastically. <laughs> I fucking hate you right now, dude. <laughs> I, uh, well, the thing about it is if I got straight A's, I would get a new video game. That was my reward. So I would get to buy a new fucking game for my Sega Saturn and shit. See, at least your parents knew how to bribe you properly. Like in high school, my dad would always bribe me with shit that I didn't fucking like, which was like the dumbest shit ever. <laughs> That's what would have come up to me. So I remember in, uh, it was like my sophomore year, right? He yeah. goes, if you get a straight egg, <laughs> I buy you a BMW. <laughs> and I looked at him and I was like, I don't like cars. <laughs> like, I don't care what the car, yeah. I don't care about cars. Yeah. He was like, I'm gonna get you a BMW. And okay. I was like, I don't <laughs> like cars. You know what I mean? And then he brought it up in my senior year. He goes, I don't understand. How come you never get a straight A? I told you I was gonna get you a BMW. And I was like, look at her mom. I'm like, is he fucking dumb? <laughs> I don't fucking want a car. Look, man, parents don't know how to listen. <laughs> okay. Uh, quick, quick side note about BMWs. When I used to work at California Pizza Kitchen, I had a boss, this Indian dude. Um, what was his name? I, I forget. <laughs> Not Pinter. <laughs> it was a it Run was Deep. A, no, it was it was like Craig. <laughs> yeah, it was literally like like Brian or something, yeah. right? But anyways, he would always he would be like he would say this joke all the time, and I cracked me up. And I, I actually want to work it into a script. He's like, I'm happy, you know why? I go home to a BMW, a big Mexican woman. <laughs> <laughs> I have a BMW at home. He's living the fucking dream, dude. <laughs> so, parents don't listen. Well, first of all, are you hungry? I'm fucking starving. I man. have a special treat for you, dog. Oh, híjole de la chingada. I was driving you, pinche puto. I was driving up here, and I was like, let me see what the Postmate options are. And I was like, let me see if I can Postmate something we wouldn't normally just bring. All right, peep game, my guy. Okay, see. Every time he talks like this, me get a little worried. It's the biggest Dorito chip you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs>
First, we'll do this. Oh, and a moose bouche. Aluminum poil. Aluminum poil is bread. <laughs> I'm gonna slowly roll out the accoutrements as we work our way up to. Ah, smells good. The bread smells fantastic. I did not order mac and cheese, but they brought us mac and cheese. Oh, that smells fantastic. Garlic. I smell garlic powder on that. Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Um. <clears throat> Are you ready for this? What's this, Boston Market? The fucking world? <laughs> a ribeye steak with grilled asparagus. Hold on, where did you go? What in the world and is happening? A lobster tail for each of us. Wow. Well, I didn't know you could post me shit like this. Oh, here's a baked borado. Baked borado! With some butter. Butter. Wow, Tim. Yeah, and... There's utensils. I literally, uh, no, you can Postmate shit like this. I've literally Postmated like a fucking Wagyu steak from Mastro's before. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Tim. Would you like me to uh, pour the butter over oh, this lobster? Oh, please. We are splurging. We are. We're celebrating. This is amazing. Isn't it great? Wow. It's, oh, this is from Black Angus. <laughs> oh. Can I tell you something? Yes. Black Angus was used to be, there's a couple of spots when you're really poor that's like the fancy spot. Yes. Red Lobster and Black Angus. If we're talking about, you know, me getting video games for my straight A's, Black Angus was, it's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> there was always like specific, for me growing up, it was like Red Lobster or it was uh, fucking this one buffet called JJ North. Okay. And we used to always go eat. I always thought JJ North was funny because it sounded like a fucking porn star's name. <laughs> but Hometown Buffet took them out of business. But like Red Lobster was like the uh, red patty night. You know what I mean? It was like special Ooh. type of shit. Yeah. I um. So we would either always go to. Black Angus, or we would go to um, this place called Charlie Brown in Long Beach. I don't know if it's still a restaurant, but that was like my treat. If it was my birthday, and I used to think I was so cool because we go to Red Lobster and I would get a fucking steak and lobster thing by myself. I would get the big boy plate and eat a little bit of it and just eat the rest like the next day or, you know, take it home. But that was my, I started feeling like I was such a little boss. You know what I'm saying? Here's your steak, sir. You know what's so funny? Hmm. Like the other day you posted this thing where, uh, People are like, uh, millennials really be going to clubs in a full ass fucking tie and everything else, right? Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, like, I forget about the age gap because people don't understand why we had to. It's like during that time, what, people, what like young people don't remember was gang violence was highly, highly glorified, oh, right. even to the regular folk like us, mm -hmm. right? So the reason why clubs didn't allow you to wear regular clothes was because people bring fucking knives and guns everywhere. Well, so. At the club, you had to wear like a suit and tie because number one, ghetto people didn't fucking want to wear that shit. That was their mentality. So they wouldn't allow people to come in. So it was one way to weed them out. Second, you weren't allowed to sag your pants or wear baggy clothes because people would conceal weapons. It was that. And also, when people would wear caps, a lot of them were gang affiliated. Yes. So they'd be why. like, let's get rid of the gang colors. Let's mm -hmm. make people fucking dress up. So it was like when we were going to clubs, it was always dress code. Yep. Like we were in Vegas and shit, you know? There was clubs where like they didn't let you wear red and blue. That you just weren't allowed to wear those colors. Like it was so weird at the time. And then I remember, uh, I forgot when it was, but I, you know, I hadn't gone to a club in a hot second. And I was leaving and they're like, Where are you going? I was like, I gotta go to the club. And they're like, Oh, you don't have to wear the whole shit anymore. I'm like, For reals? Mm -hmm. And I showed up to the club with fucking jeans and some regular shit on and some Jordans. And it was fucking good. And my mind was blown. Let me tell you, nowadays, even at like, I'm talking about the, High-end Hollywood clubs? Mm -hmm. How's that lobster? It's fantastic. High-end Hollywood clubs? You be out here in some, some a, a clean sweatsuit. You'll be good. <laughs> like, if, 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 not like a fucking dumpy, like, you know, gray sweats and shit, but like, if you, like a stylish sweatsuit, you be straight in the club, bro. Really? Yeah, well, back when we would still kind of go to the clubs and like, you get a table here and there. And um, I remember, and I was just talking about this with Rick. It's interesting because we were just, all the guys were just, you know, the girls were dressed up a little more, but all the guys were just basically in black t-shirts. And um, somebody was like, all you guys in black t-shirts and gold chains, that's such an L.A. thing to wear to the club. I was like, really? I didn't know it was an L.A. thing, but that's, oh, for real? We're, all, we're all just in black t-shirts, gold chains. Everyone's like, oh, y'all so L.A. I was like, interesting. I was like, Let me tell you something. 
club attire, like, before you would leave, like, I remember it was just, like, a whole affair. It's like, what the fuck are we going to wear? Mm-hmm. I can't wear this. What you wearing? Oh, I can't wear what you fucking wearing. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I got to make sure we look fly and shit like mm-hmm. that. It was a whole ordeal. Do you miss clubbing? Well, I'm not going to lie. Um, so, I don't miss um, the people, like, you know what? It depends, okay. because um, you know, I don't miss the 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 club experience necessarily because we used to, you know, initially the reason for guys to go to clubs you're trying to meet girls and hook up with girls, right? Yes. Dance with girls, hook up with girls. So a lot of times when people would when I do shows and they invite me to like, yo, come to the after party at the club, I'm like, I'm not doing that, bro. I got no reason to. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. what is the point of me going and get drunk with people I don't know and um, I'm not trying to hook up with anybody. So like, I'm. What's the point, right? Mm-hmm. But the other day, um, every once in a while, I will get the sudden urge because there was a time when, you know, we got a little money and I started, you know, when I went to the club, I would get a table with the homies and it was just kind of a night of dancing with the homies and the homegirls, get a couple bottles, you're in your little section and we're just dancing and with your friends and you're dancing to loud music and you're just having a good time. I do kind of miss that where like, where you're just in this environment with your good friends, loud music, you're drinking. And I, when I was in Vegas with Rick recently, we were supposed to get a table at this club because Zoe, um, our, my, our DJ homie, um, was supposed to be working the club that night. But he missed his flight. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to go to the club if you're not working it, bro. Yeah. But I was actually looking forward to like, you know what? I'm looking forward to just dancing with my friends in a little corner. And hey, this ever do this to you where... Um... <clears throat> Now, typically, like, people who I don't find attractive, I'll never find them attractive, right? It doesn't matter what it is. However, now that I'm looking back on it, I remember this very specific moment. And this girl, was, she's a really good friend now. Mm-hmm. But I never looked at her that type of way ever, right? But, okay. when, you, but you, when you're in the club scene <laughs> and they're dressed differently and they're acting differently, yeah. it makes you see them differently. <laughs> and, like, it was weird because we would kick it all the time. Mm-hmm. And we're just dancing. She was, like, grinding up on me. I'm like, am I attracted to you? <laughs> and I, mean, I was like, hold on a second. But this is how, and I realized then that's why people fit, make mistakes at the club, because the whole situation is weird. Utensils. No, I um exactly. I mean that's why they say uh, fork two. That's why they say dancing is like an aphrodisiac. You know mm. what I'm saying? That's why sometimes you'll be at the club, you're drinking a little bit, you're dancing with your homegirl, and you guys just end up making out. Like the shit, <laughs> shit happens sometimes. You know? Well, that never happened with you, me. Yeah. But I, I understand when you have Riz. <laughs> That occasionally that could happen, but I've heard stories about this happening to other people. You never just randomly made out with someone at the club? At the club, but not my friends. Oh. Because it'd be too weird for me. I'm trying to, okay, well, I, I say that. I'm trying to think now if I actually did make out with any friends. I, they weren't like good friends. If I ever did it's make like acquaintances. out. acquaintances. Yeah. yeah, like someone where. That's different. Like, yeah, you, you're inviting just a bunch of people to come to the club with you. And then sometimes you're drunk and you end up. Oh, I'm going to tell you the story um, about me and Andrew in the club. No. <laughs> okay. So this fool, Uh-oh. Andrew Garcia, <laughs> my, mind you, me and Andrew, we get very drunk together, okay? And um, Andrew Garcia, well, let me just, let me not even ruin the punchline of this story. Um, so me and Andrew at the club. This is Greystone. This is back when we're fucking, you know, this is dressing up for the club shit, right? And we're talking to a homegirl. I think, no, me and Andrew, Andrew is trying to game up this girl. Mm-hmm. And he's like, and he's fucked up. He's drunk, right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, he's like, nah, he, he's like, you should give me a kiss to this girl. He's like, nah, trust me, I got bomb ass lips. I got bomb ass lips. Watch. He's like, no, he goes, right to him, and he leans over and fucking kisses me on the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> What's the move? Andrew? Andrew leans over, he's like, I got bomb ass lips, huh, Tim? He leans over, fucking kisses me. He's like, huh? I was like, yeah, you got soft lips. <laughs> Trying to wingman. <laughs> it's like, that's the one time where I would be like, okay, pause. <laughs> pause, my guy. It was just one of those things where I'm like, okay, his drunk ass thinks that this is the best way to convince this girl to make out with him. He's going to be like, watch, even the homies say I got soft lips. <laughs> so he, Wait, did it work? I don't remember. I mean, all I remember is waking up next to Andrew naked, but like... <laughs> <laughs> With his dick on your thigh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I got soft that list, right? That's like the only time I can ever remember kissing a man on the mouth. That's fucking crazy, dog. <laughs> dog, that's whole 
There'd be some funny ass stories, man. Like one of the things that I hated about clubs, like specifically in Sacramento early on, was like Sacramento was not a very nice place, right? And so there would always be like some mm. kind of stupid shit happening at the club where somebody was fucking fighting or something else like that. I remember though, I had a homie. Oh, it's funny now, but not I've told this story before, but went to this place, it was called Polari, right? It was a lounge. But mm -hmm. Polari was a space that was like notoriously known for a lot of like Asian gang members to go. Mm -hmm. And we're in there. I see people running out. I don't know what the fuck is happening. And this dude that I know of, I wouldn't say he's really a good friend, came on this will stab somebody inside the club, right? Mm -hmm. But tell me, guess what he stabbed him with? <laughs> you know the fucking uh <laughs> fingernail clipper, the fucking little blade. Oh, yeah, you mentioned this. <laughs> That's fucking gross, dog. But there would be, like, just these weird situations where sometimes I felt like it was, like, there was that, and then also, uh, if y'all remember this, like, young Asian gangsters, fucking pool, pool halls. Mm. I fucking hated going to pool halls, dude, but I would never say no because I didn't want to look like a bitch. <laughs> but every time somebody would get fucked up. Why do young Asian dudes, uh, gangsters, love pool halls so much? I don't but there would be some dudes that would be at the pool hall where they would like literally, you know, they'd be playing pool or some shit and they would like on purpose hit somebody with the stick just to start shit. Mm. Just be like, oh, just to see if he's going to do something. Really? And I'm like, oh, God, please not today, guys. Like, I'm not a gangster. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, they would just like want to fight all the fucking time. Wow. I'm I, so glad <sighs> I didn't uh, have that experience. <sighs> That's because you were a straight A student. All right. <laughs> And I was trying to be something that I wasn't. <laughs> Speaking of old Asians and also um, how parents don't listen. Um, recently, man, I sent my dad this adorable video of Veda. Because um, last time my parents were over, they brought Veda a couple little stuffed dolls, right? And it's one's like a tiny baby. And Veda has been playing with this tiny baby. And she remembers that my mom brought her this gift. And she calls my mom Yaya, right? Mm -hmm. So she'll, she'll play with the baby and she'll be like, I'll be like, who's that? To the baby. Um, and Veda will be like, yeah, yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah, baby. Because she remembers that my mom got it for her, right? And I'm like, this is fucking cute. I took a video of it, sent it to my dad. Mm -hmm. I sent it to the family group chat. I was like, hey, look at this. Um, That's cute as shit. Cute as shit. They watched the video, or my dad did at least. He replies with a random video of Thai people. Okay. What the fuck? And I'm like, or it was like a random funny video or something. So I said, ha, 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 wait, are you going to react? Are you going to reply to that super cute video I just sent of Veda? He says, oh, no, 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 no. Okay. So I send this super cute video of Veda. He sends a picture of a basket that my mom has been looking for at our house. And I'm like, there it is. And I'm like, wait, no reply to Veda's cute nickname for the doll. He says, cute, period. <laughs> What's wrong with your dad right I now? I said, no, no. You have to say, oh my God, how cute. <laughs> exclamation point, exclamation point. <laughs> then, then he sends a picture of monkeys playing in Thailand. <laughs> what the fuck is going on with your dad, dude? Dude, I don't know. <laughs> what he, the fuck is happening right now? He just like redirects it. I'm like, I copied and pasted. My previous text, I said, she called the doll baby Yaya. That is cute. He sends a little emoji that says cute. <laughs> Maybe your dad's trying to piss you off. I don't know, man. I don't get it. It's, just like, it's your birthday. He just writes, it is your birthday. <laughs> no, why, is your, why is your dad trying to pick a fight? <laughs> you know, literally, like... And I had to tell him, I had to train him, hey, if I'm sending you pictures of Veda, can you give me some type of response? And, like, I guess he forgot. Because I said something that I thought was going to be super adorable, calling the the little gift Yaya Baby, Baby Yaya. And he's like, here's a picture of a basket. Okay. <laughs> you know why this is also probably annoying for you? Which, for me, I don't even have a kid, and it would be annoying to me. Yeah. How many fucking times do they ask for a fucking grandkid? You know what I mean? I know. How many times have you asked for a grandkid? How much have you annoyed me about this? It would be great to be a grandfather. I send you this video that shows that, first of all, this child used to scare just from your face alone. And then you just go, that is a child. I'm like, what the fuck? That is a child. Here is a basket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you seen these monkeys? <laughs> <laughs> You're killing David, Dad. <laughs> 
I'm gonna make sure and clip this for <laughs> for IG just so my dad watches it. That's so funny. All right, we'll be right back. As a parent like myself, your top priority is always your children's well-being, right? You want to give them everything they need to grow and thrive, both now and in the future. With term life insurance from Fabric by Gerber Life, help protect your family so their future is secure no matter what happens, right? Fabric was designed by parents for parents to help you get a high-quality, surprisingly affordable term life insurance policy in less than 10 minutes. You could be offered coverage instantly with no health exam required. Look, I'm a father of two now, okay? The last thing I want is to walk into the street and a coyote leaps onto my chest and rips my neck open, killing me, and then vultures come and pick apart my bones, all right? And of course, I have nothing left for my children and wife. That's why you gotta get insurance, okay? Fabric was specifically designed to give parents like you and me affordable term life insurance, plus wills, access to college savings funds, and more, all in an easy online experience. Protect your family today with Fabric by Gerber Life. Apply today in just 10 minutes at meetfabric.com slash dudes. That's meetfabric.com slash dudes, M-E-E-T, fabric.com slash dudes. Policies issued by Western Southern Life Assurance Company, not available in certain states. Prices subject to underwriting and health questions. This podcast is brought to you by Liquid IV. It gets me hydrated when I'm sweaty because it has a lot of electrolytes. Dude, that was kind of fire, man. <laughs> I love Liquid IV. Whenever I'm working out, if I'm doing Muay Thai boxing, and you know that weather is <laughs> heating up, I'm going to be sweating a lot and I need my electrolytes because I need to stay hydrated because guess what? Liquid IV is not just a little bit of salt in there, my friends. We're talking about you get five essential vitamins, two times faster hydration than water alone. Use it in the first thing in the morning before workout and when you feel run down after a long night out and on long flights because guess what? When your boy gets a little crazy with Timmy boy, I takes my liquid IV and I feel amazing. Zing. I absolutely love it. Contains five essential vitamins, B3, B5, B6, B12, and vitamin C. Cut. So guess what? Grab your liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code DUDES at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop better hydration today using promo code DUDES at liquidiv.com. Why are you trying to pick a fight with you? Dude, I don't know what the deal is. You want to slice up some more steak? Oh, I'm going to get some asparagiti. Yeah, do it. Um, asparagus makes your peas stink, right? Yes, it does. And you've heard my special fact about asparagus, right? Oh, yes, I have. Mm -hmm. And I've told that fact to many people. Isn't it cool? I had no idea because everybody says the same thing. It's like some people can't smell it. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, let me tell you a little interesting fact that I found out by myself without telling <laughs> Here's the thing about that fact that, um, and if you don't know, real quick, that, um, uh, yes, asparagus makes everybody's pee stink, but not everybody has the, like, I don't know, uh, nose goblins that make, that make you smell. It was a really cool fact to tell that nose goblin. <laughs> <laughs> that can make you smell the stinky pee. So it made me think, like, you know, you know how some people just, you can bite something and you're like, this is delicious, and someone's like, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of think, like, ah, you're... <laughs> You're tripping, right? Mm -hmm. But maybe it's literally their taste buds are just genetically trash. trash. <laughs> and it's like, oh, you were born with whack taste buds. But not only taste, but to think that people are smelling things differently, it makes me think like, oh, when people listen to different types of music and sometimes they're like, I don't like this song, are their eardrums just like designed differently where they hear a song that you like and they're like, this does not please my soul, you know? I don't know. I, I've never had a, a rock song please my soul. So I don't know what any of that shit feels like. So every time people are like, dude, you heard this fucking, dude, that's a classic. I'm like, all right, I guess. Um, no, you admitted to liking Queen songs last time when I told you which songs were Queen songs. I said they were good, but they don't make me feel a certain way, right? Mm. Like if I hear fucking Tupac, Tupac Shacker, mm -hmm. makes me feel a certain way. Okay. Let me ask you this. What if it's a rock remix of a Tupac song? Well, then I might have to say that's the best song that has ever existed <laughs> in my life. I, I do as a kid because 
I'm not sure if you guys remember this, but there was that whole East Coast, West Coast thing, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, if it's, it wasn't really a marketing ploy, but what a great marketing ploy to get kids yeah. to fucking rep a set. <clears throat> Even if they weren't gang members. Exactly. And this is what I mean by when we were younger, like gang culture was fucking glorified Mm -hmm. to the point where it was a selling point, like a marketing point to young kids who weren't in gangs. And they would have us. I remember as a kid, I'm like, I got to throw up the West Side sign (laughs) without touching my hand. And I wanted to do that so fucking bad as a little kid. You know what I mean? And I just thought about that. That's some gang shit. But you don't. You're not thinking it's gang shit, though. You know what I mean. A West Side is still acceptable outside of gang shit, though. I, West I, Side. I still throw up West Sides all day. I know, but not, when we were younger, it was some serious shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's up, West Side motherfucker? Depends. Depends because you know, the gang shit gets so intricate, right? Um, where it would be like, you know, uh, yeah. So we're from the West Coast, so we throw up West Side. But then there were dudes um, from that Snoop roll with, right, the East Siders, mm-hmm. because they were from East Side of Long Beach, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, it gets very intricate. Uh, it's a lot going on. It's a whole lot of just very deep-seated, deep-rooted information. Um, I remember um, I used to wear a lot of uh, fucking, like, blue and orange, and then the homie was like, yo, um, you can't wear, like, orange... On my block, because of um, Hoover Crips wear orange, that's their shit. So if you wear, like, a Houston hat, which is H and orange, it was like, oh, they gonna think that's some Hoover shit. Don't wear that around How here. How you gonna claim a whole fucking color, man? It's, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot, man. Yeah. That was, so- Doug, when I was a kid, so I used to grow up next to these dudes. And eventually those guys, you know, when you're a kid, you're just a bunch of kids, right? <laughs> but, you know, as you grow up, you start going to different things. I was a little nice, sweet kid that happened to go around a lot of bad people. Mm-hmm. This dude, I don't say his name, but he grew up to be like a Norteño. Like all of his fucking cousins were, all that other shit, right? So I'm in junior high <laughs> and I'm walking home from my friend's house, like kind of late at night. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, this fucking car rolls up on me. They're like, where the fuck you from? And I'm like, oh, shit. I'm thinking I'm about to get fucking jumped or some shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> Melissa B goes, David. I'm like, oh, my. It was that dude that, I, you know, we grew up together. Mm. But he moved over to this area called Highland. And so he was like, what you doing? He's like, you be walking around here like that. I'm like, dog, are you fucking threatening me and shit? But that's like, my palms are getting sweaty just thinking about that. I remember just as like an eighth grader thinking I was going to fucking die. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like that shit to me, like whenever we have a podcast, people, oh, you should interview this gang member. I'm like, I don't want to. <laughs> I really don't want to. Right. Like I've heard. Listen, it's not that their stories aren't unique. Right. I just like PTSD for me. Like I don't want to hear that shit. You know what I mean? Here's some here's some funny shit. Um, when I started going to Paramount my sophomore year, um, it was certain things I just wasn't aware of. Right. And um, of course, I was cool with everybody. Black people, Mexicans. Um and, um, you know, a lot of Cholas, like, or Chola-esque women would invite me to their different parties and shit. And one time I asked Rick if he wants to come to this party with me. And there's an a- area of Paramount called the Sands. It's, like, right before you cross into Compton. Um, it's, like, sand, like, sand, sand, I don't know, sand this, sand this, different streets. San Dimas, San yeah, whatever. They're called know. the Sands, right? So. <laughs> San Sarah. I told Rick where this party was at. Yeah, all the fonts. Yeah. I told Rick where this party was at, and he's like. Uh, I can't go to that party. <laughs> He's like, it's in the sands. I was like, why not? He's like, they do not like blacks over there. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, nah, not for me. You can go to that one by yourself. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, they use the word mayate around me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was very like segregated in LA. Like all those, all like the culture stuff. Like where I grew up, it was, it would kind of mix and mingle here and there. And it wasn't too much of a problem. Obviously, like there are people who didn't, but- Coming to L.A. and seeing that type of, like, gang segregation type of shit was very unique. It's very, like, racial shit. You know what I mean? It's something that, you know, you kind of, um, if you don't grow up around it, you have no idea. You yeah. Know? And even, um, you know, yeah, I lived in Long Beach till I was 10, but I wasn't going to school in Long Beach. So I didn't really know how the shit worked in Long Beach. I didn't really get exposed to the gang shit until I, I went to Paramount. Ooh. Um but even then, it wasn't a whole lot of uh, Crips and Blood shit. Like, yeah, it was people banging here and there. But it was mainly just a lot of, like, the Mexican gangs, you know? Um, uh, a lot of dudes that were, like, you know, fucking talking about 
cartels and shit like that. And I'm like, dude, we're in high school. This is high school. This yeah. is crazy. Hey, man, I'm in theater, dude. <laughs> yeah, we're in a literally drama class. Yeah. You have a fucking <laughs> Hamlet skull in your head. <laughs> He's like, you kill somebody? No, I'm going to theater. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah. Will I kill somebody? <laughs> <laughs> you want to see my skull? <laughs> it's like, bro, that's a human skull. <laughs> uh, let's not talk to this. Speaking of hilarious cholos, there was one in my class. I don't know if I've told this story before, but I used to write poems for girls and shit, right? And like little raps. And I would, um, I think one time I wrote a poem for this girl, Brittany, and I said the rap to her. Uh, I said the rap poem to her uh, in, in front of the class because someone asked me to do it. And so I said, Britney, Britney. <laughs> no, <Nah>, but, <laughs> but I said the shit. And after no. I finished, uh, the last line was like super sweet. So everyone was like, oh, right. But there's this one fucking chunky ass cholo dude. And I remember he always stuck out because out of all the cholo dudes in the class, he had his voice hasn't hadn't matured yet. He was still like, like it was like very like high pitched, you know, like it was like, oh, yeah, yeah. oh my God, like that. Because it was fucking Geraldo and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. And so I finished the poem, everyone claps, and he goes, all the girls are getting wet. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know what's so interesting too? Like the, one of the biggest things that I realized was how different like Mexican people, LA Mexican people are very unique. Mm. It's like its own unique culture. Mm -hmm. And so when you see on TV when somebody's imitating like Mexican folks, right? It's mm. usually like LA Mexican cadence. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the, it's all, not even Mexican. It's like. It's almost just like the cholo cadence. Yeah, like cholo you know? cadence. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Where yeah. even like, if, if you listen to Joe speak, like Joe Jisakawa, he has a little bit of that fucking like cholo cadence mm -hmm. because he grew up around so many Mexican people. His mm -hmm. friends were Mexican. Mm -hmm. So like when I, when I come here, sometimes it cracks me up. Like for example, I went hiking uh, at this place called Eaton Canyon. And like the water's super high or it was when it was raining. So it was like up to your waist. Some dudes didn't want to, for some reason in LA, Mexicans love hiking. Like that's their shit. <laughs> They fucking love hiking. They love nature shit. The girls got the fucking eyebrows going on, the <laughs> eyeliner shit, but they're straight up hiking. So I'm walking over this path and there's like this piece of wood. I'm like, I'm not going to walk on the wood because if I do, I'll just fall into the water. So I'm just going to walk through the fucking river. Okay. So I'm walking through. There's this dude, bald head, tattooed fucking up, has a wife beater on, long shorts, long, the whole fucking like typical yeah. getup, right? Wow. And he goes, Oh no, if I see what's up, eh? You don't, you ain't no fucking pussy, huh? Walk through that shit, huh? You a fucking G? Yeah, I see what's up. <laughs> I'm like, all right, guy. <laughs> you ain't no fucking bitch. And hey, he didn't sock check you? <laughs> no, he socked me my chest. Hey, thanks, bro. No, I mean actual socks. No, 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 no. <laughs> I wasn't wearing any socks. I was going through the river. Oh damn! But he was dog. That sock checking thing. I heard stories about that. <laughs> so my buddy Edric told me this story where. He was going to the liquor store in his neighborhood, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> At the time that he was living in. And then, you know, he had his socks rolled up. Yeah. He's about to walk into the liquor store. Somebody sock checks him. He goes, hey, roll that shit down, fool. Really? Yeah, and then he fucking had to roll his fucking socks down. I thought it was a joke. No. I didn't know it was serious like that. No. My, he told that story on the podcast. What? Where he the dude made him roll his fucking socks down before he walked into the liquor store. Really? Oh. I only knew about that from Fool's Gone Wild. I didn't know people were taking it serious like that. Neither did I. Well, damn. See, we're innocent. We don't know these type of things, man. <laughs> there was this other time when I was out in East LA, and this is why I fucking love LA because you experience some of the weirdest shit. There's just a taco spot that I always go to. They go, this, uh, they do like al carbon tacos, like like charcoal shit. One of my favorite fucking spots. Go there, <laughs> and then there's three people in line. It's me, my buddy Vince, mm -hmm. this lady in front of us, and like this really fat Mexican dude behind us, right? Mm -hmm. And the lady, she's ordering her food. And mind you, they just opened up. It's not going to take too long, but she's ordering like a good amount of tacos for her family. Mm. Out of fucking nowhere, this fool behind us, he's just like, order for the whole fucking world and shit. Fuck. <laughs> I'm like, bro. <laughs> but I don't want to laugh because I'm scared. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> fucking order for the whole world and shit. Fuck. <laughs> it's like, bro, you ain't got to yell at this old ass lady, man. Come okay, on. I love cholos, dog. <laughs> no, cholos are fucking funny, man. They have some of the best humor. There was um speaking of taco stands um I was at you just you just reminded me of a of an occurrence years and years ago I was at this spot called Yios Tacos by my old condo in Paramount which was also right next to uh, Ty Smile and um I had just got done I was doing a shoot right uh, I forget if it was a skit or what but I was taking people to this taco stand that I love right and um, there was one girl she kept saying. Oh my God, I love like authentic taco stands. I love authentic tacos, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right, cool. You'll love this place. 
So we're in line for tacos. She orders, bro. She's like, can I just get sour cream and cheese in a tortilla? And then immediately, like, everyone's thrown off. The people in line, the ladies at the counter. And I'm like, you were just telling me you like fucking authentic tacos. What is this fucking Hollywood-ass order you're doing? Like, what are you? what is this, right? So, and mind you, she was like a skinny model chick, right? So I'm like, okay. Why are you getting fucking tortillas then and shit? That dog, it was so, I was, I was already kind of annoyed. I'm like, I'm taking you to my little authentic taco embarrassing spot. Embarrassing me. You're yeah. fucking embarrassing You're me You're making right me now. look stupid, right? <laughs> so she orders her shit. They finally find a way to make it for her. But of course, it's like, it's weird. It's like tossed together, kind of like, they don't know what the Yeah, they're like, this is not food. What is this? Yeah. yeah. So she gets it. She's complaining that it's like messy or whatever, right? And then she goes up and she says something. Um... And, and there was this guy there eating at the taco stand. He was like, he might have been Asian. He might have been some type of, I don't know. A little but, mix. Yeah, but he looked kind of Asian-ish. He, he was chilling. He wasn't a cholo dude. He was like regular dude, fucking chilling, trying to eat his tacos, just kind of watching us the whole time. And then, so when she goes up to the counter to complain, she's like, hey, this is, can you like remake this? Because it's really messy. And then she like dropped something. And then, as a, and then joking around, she looked at him. She's like, she like, hey, can you pick that up for me? I'm just kidding, right? He's like, you know what? That's not funny, and you're really entitled right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you're being really entitled right now, and you know, you're being really disrespectful to the people at this place. And I was like, and I, because I knew her, but didn't really know her like that. So I was like, I, I wasn't sure if I was gonna say something to her. But then he starts going off, and I'm like, yes, <laughs> talk your shit, yeah. guy. <laughs> Fucking put this bitch in her place. Yeah. Oh, she, and then she comes. She's like, oh, and she comes back. She's like, oh my god, can you believe that guy said that to me? And I'm in my head. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> you dapped them up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it's weird, like how. Okay, let me just put it. I, I was. Oh, you know what? You fucking just. <laughs> last weekend, I went to San Diego, right? Mm -hmm. And I had this weird, like, cultural experience where I. Listen, like, we know white people, right? But we never grew up. Ar I never grew up around white people like that. Yeah, so same. I don't understand, like, how certain white people work in certain white people situations. <laughs> so I'm in really nice area in San Diego. And these are very uppity whites, okay. right? Every every culture has their uppities. Uppity whites and dusty whites, and there's a whole spectrum, yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are the uppity whites. And we're at this little pizza spot. It was trash, by the way. But either way, it doesn't matter. Uh -huh. Very nice people. Guy walks up. He goes, hey, can I get a... <clears throat> how long is it going to take for this pizza to be made? Annoying already. Already annoying as fuck. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, it's going to take a couple minutes. He goes, cool, I'll take these two slices. And the guy comes back, the, the guy who's working the pizza. He goes, actually, it's going to be about 10. Is that okay? He goes, well... Your guy told me it was two minutes, and you're telling me it's 10. Do you think I would have bought this pizza if you would have told me it was 10 minutes? So what are you going to do about this? And I'm sitting here like, is this? What the fuck? And I'm looking at everybody else around me yeah. to be like, yo, this guy's an asshole. And they were just looking at like, oh, this is normal. Really? And I'm like, this is normal? How is this real? And you know me being who the fuck I am, right? I'm just like talking shit about this guy out loud to mm. Mariel so he could hear it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. What I mean? I'm like, damn, it's just a fucking pizza. If you, if this guy over here would have just, I don't know, said, can I get a refund? He probably could get a fucking refund back. Right. And you could tell he could hear me. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then the guy, the owner comes back. He goes, okay, so how can I fix the situation? They're like, well, I don't want this pizza. He goes, well, I can give you a refund. He goes, good. And I'm like, okay. In my mind, I'm thinking, am I the odd one out here? Right. Because everybody else is acting like it's okay. And I just kept thinking, like, dog, I wish he would have done this a little closer where there's more ethnic people. I think he would have got socked the fuck up. All he had to do was say, I, I don't refund? want it anymore. Exactly. He didn't have to go through this whole five-minute explanation about if it was two minutes or ten. I you could have just been like, oh, I actually got to go. Can you give me a refund? Where does that come from? I don't know. But he was legit yelling at this, like, 16-year-old kid. It's like all you could have said was, hey, I got to go. Can I get a refund? Because he didn't make it yet. Mm. <laughs> and then they would have just been like, oh, of course. But what was this whole, what, what was the point that you were trying to prove? I don't know, man. Maybe it's because we really, you know, we come from working with people, working mm -hmm. like not desirable fucking, um, what do you call the jobs when you got to work with people? Uh, customer service yeah, type yeah, yeah. shit, you know, retail. We understand how annoying people can be, the struggles of working at a restaurant. You know, I think I even, the other day, me and Chia were at, um, we were at a restaurant that we like, order some pasta, and uh, and then she was about to take a bite of some pasta, a little hair there, and I was like, ah, man, you know, like, I feel like a lot of, some people would have made a big deal, you know, but I, I get it. I've been there. Mm -hmm. 
I know that there's like a lot of just random things that can happen. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not, I've never been the fucking type of social media influencer to be like, at so and so, serve me something yeah, with a yeah, hair yeah. in it. What are you gonna do about this? I just kind of like quietly flag down the server, like, hey, there's a hair right there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, of course they comp the pasta, and I was like, all right. And, and I know that server girl was like, fuck, there goes my tip, right? Yeah. I tipped her extra because in my mind, being a server before, I know as soon as something shit like that happens, you're like, because of someone else's fuck up, someone else's fuck up, I lost my tip. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could empathize with that type yeah. of stuff. You know what I would have done? I would have saw that hair <laughs> and I wouldn't like this. <laughs> <laughs> Just kept on I mean, like, eating. Mm, it's still short. <laughs> just, just, mm, this hair's not dirty. I just stave it aside for after the meal. I go. <laughs> All right, well, uh, we're going to take a quick little floss break and we'll be right back. Let me tell you, your boy is a thirsty boy, okay? And you know on Dudes Behind the Foods, we love eating and drinking. And that's why today's podcast is brought to you by Tractor Beverage, okay? It's available at the restaurants you love. Tractor makes certified organic non-GMO drinks the clean way. Think organically farmed beverages with no artificial ingredients, no phony colors, no mystery preservatives, and no pesticides of concern. Now, let me tell you something. In 2022 alone, their drinks kept 25.8 tons of synthetic pesticides out of our food system, which means they're out of your body, which is lit because we're trying to be healthy nowadays, but that doesn't mean you have to sacrifice flavor. And let me tell you, I'm sipping on the lemonade right now. I actually like to take the lemonade, put it with a little bit of ice. It's delicious. You can feel the natural flavors. It's bomb. Look, listen, listen. Mmm. So before I keep blabbering on about how delicious this lemonade is, please check out OrganicImpactTracker.com. It's so refreshing to see a company doing this, keeping synthetic pesticides out of the soil, supporting organic farming, and reducing carbon emissions. I mean, you can call me a fan. A groupie, even. Years ago, so I went to Hawaii. That's the thing that people don't understand, too, when it comes to service, right? Yeah. You can't use that whole blanket thing for every restaurant. You got to look at the situation that you're fucking in, right? Mm -hmm. Taco stand. The fuck do you think you're doing? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, this is street food type of shit. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. It's not going to come up with a little fucking flour on top. And we, you know what I mean? And you ask for this weird thing. Even, like, modifying something. At a, I was like, what? for what? For what? What you doing here? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so... When we were in Hawaii, you know, there's like these guys who sell like coconuts, right? Mm -hmm. These dudes barefoot as fuck, no shirt, whatever, whatnot. Just scraggly as hell in this busta fucking Toyota Tacoma, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so my boy has a girlfriend and she's like notoriously known for fucking complaining all the time, <laughs> right? Like that she's a habitual complainer. Uh -huh. But we're thinking that she has enough common sense to be like, okay. She puts the bitch in habitual. Ooh, yes. Whoa. Wow. She right. puts the why in white, <laughs> <laughs> always asking questions. <laughs> but <laughs> you could already see like the fucking the su white supremacy coming out of us. Now she's like already like I don't like this coconut, uh, and I'm like it's from the back of a truck. Yeah, what are you gonna do? From a guy who has no t-shirt <laughs> and three teeth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like what? And she goes, well, I paid $5 for this, so I'm going to go complain. And then we're just like, please. And this fool's getting heated. Yeah. Right? Because he's like, you can't. No, and he's Hawaiian? What is he? He's Asian. Okay, okay, okay. He's like, don't fucking do this, right? So she goes up. She's asking for a refund. And he's like, you know, fuck it. And he's pissed. He goes, fuck it. Don't fucking do that. Walks up and he just buys her a new fucking coconut. Yeah. And brings it back. She goes, why'd you do that? They gave us poor service. It's like, it's from the back of a Toyota Tacoma. That's actually crazy crazy so i'm like and the funny thing is it's like you know when you're when your friends have like a whole, like you're trying to like their girlfriend <laughs> you know what i mean and i'm trying my fucking best yeah right and look she has great quality super funny all that other stuff <laughs> but damn when you want to talk about a fucking whiner and a complainer this motherfucker dude yeah, every it's... place that we went to was like oh, i can't eat that the re i can't eat that and the reason why i went that i got so irritated i was like listen Either you're down or you're not. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. need to hear the backstory about why you can't eat something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, eight of us said yes. You said no. Guess where we're going? 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you idiot. But could you imagine? Bro, one time uh, I was in New York grubbing with a couple of my homegirls that I always eat with, right? And normally, like, so they feel such pressure to find bomb restaurants for me because they know I'm such a foodie, right? Uh, this particular night, the reservations they wanted, they didn't get them. So we had to just settle on a random place that we found, right? Fucking little mom and pop. Um, I forget what kind of Asian it was, whether it was like, I don't know, Chinese or fucking um, uh, Taiwanese or some type of specific type of Asian shit. We just kind of stumbled in there, right? So now, now mind you, you know, we go to some bougie shit sometimes, right? Um, because they're always trying to find like some top tier food for me. So we go in there and I'm like, all right, cool. Let me get like the number 14, right? And they're like, excuse me. Um, okay. One of them is vegan. She's like, do you, do you guys, do you have this without meat? And the other one's like, is there a way that you can substitute blah, blah, blah. And the, literally the server fucking 45 year old Asian lady is like, doesn't even know what the fuck they're saying. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, and after like this back and forth with them and the server and I'm just watching and I'm like. Can y'all just please? <laughs> yes. She doesn't. C- c- please. Yeah. They're like, and they're like, oh my God, you're right. Okay, yes, yes, we'll take this. She's like, she doesn't speak English. <laughs> she barely spoke English. <laughs> like, guys, this you don't do that here. Do you have anything that's gluten free? <laughs> like, literally, yeah. dog. I have this weird little bacterial infection in my gut. <laughs> it's like, she only understands hot, cold, <laughs> yes, no. That's it. 12. <laughs> 12. <laughs> hey, shout outs to my bun me sweetie out there out in fucking uh, Monterey Park. Mm. I love her to death. Every time I come in, she looks at me like she fucking hates me. <laughs> I love her, dude. I'm like, what's the best thing on the menu? She goes, read. <laughs> <laughs> she hates me. I, I want to go. <laughs> I'm trying to flirt with her every time. And she, I, she likes it, but she, she kind of hates it low key too. <laughs> She's young or old? Old. Oh, I love it. I'm like, I was like, you look very beautiful today. She goes, hurry up and order. <laughs> <laughs> she fucking hates me, dog. And then she goes in the back and she's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. No, she does do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She puts a little that extra juice on your shit. She starts fucking being a DJ in the back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> squeak, squeak. Speaking of Hawaii coconuts, um, <laughs> one time, me and Shio's first time in Hawaii together is Honolulu. We were also cruising, came across one of these people on the side of the road selling fucking coconuts off the back of their truck, right? And um, they didn't take cash and we didn't have cash. So my dumb ass, like thinking back on it now, we laugh at this because it was such a silly decision. But I'm like, I ordered a couple of coconuts. We'd already started drinking them. They're like, oh, cash only. I'm like, oh, I'm like, is there an ATM? They're like, yeah, down the, you know, go to the 7-Eleven, down the, whatever, whatever, right? I'm like, all right, well, um, just so y'all know, we're not trying to like, you know, run off. Um, She'll stay with, she'll, like, my girlfriend will stay with you guys while I go to the ATM, right? <laughs> Use her as sacrifice. Yeah. So I'm like, so I'm like driving to 7 Eleven. I'm like, are you good? She's like, yeah, I'm just kind of sitting here with them while they like chop coconuts. <laughs> Thinking back now, I'm like, why didn't I just give them a fucking, like, my shoes or something? You know what I'm saying? I fucking left Chia as, like, okay, as a hostage. Okay. I'm going to give you my five foot one wife <laughs> whose retinas are detached to fend for herself. <laughs> and I'm just going to get, go get this $5 at the ATM. I'll be right back, okay? This is a good even trade, right? (laughs) Not the best decision. (laughs) She comes back. She's over here fucking tied up. (laughs) I'm here for ransom. Her her kidney's missing. (laughs) (laughs) And then you propose. Mm. And then it was a beautiful wedding. It was a beautiful wedding. Thanks, man. It was insane. My wedding is not going to be that beautiful. Uh, I think uh, think your wedding is going to be super fun. I'm excited. It actually isn't. Uh, because it's literally for the parents, so it's more for formalities and then having a few close people around. Okay, lit. How, m- how many do you think? There's only going to be like a total seventy people. Oh, where? It's okay. literally just for the family. So okay, okay. Let me ask you this: How many um, after all the family members? How many friends will be there? Probably forty. Okay, where? Yeah, that's so, a fun bunch, dude. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I'm trying to listen, man. I gotta, I gotta really sit down and fucking figure this shit out <laughs> because Meryl's doing everything and it's not fair. Oh, but, to her. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I got to figure out the things that I want to add, things that I want to make sure that's there and nice so things are fun. Like, for sure, I'm just going to add a lot of alcohol. Yeah, 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 yeah. So make sure that the DJ fucking does his thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So even if it's, like, only 34 people, just fucking drink, have good food, and have fun. I think, you know, that alcohol is important. Mm-hmm. Um, when it came to me and Shia planning our wedding, you know, we had a big wedding. So she planned all the formalities, fucking flowers. Invites. What kind of 
what kind of table toppers, mm -hmm. what kind of fucking chairs, all that bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. Wakanda forever. Wakanda forever. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I was, I, I just wanted to make sure the food was good. Very good. And I wanted to make sure that we had um, open bar so everyone could get turned. Um, it was a good and a bad idea. <laughs> And I made sure to inject just little bits of our personality in there with our, like, random portraits and, like, shit like that, you know? And all the little puns that were, like, themed on the napkins with the snacks and shit like that. Just add a little bit of a little, personality. A little personality yeah. to it. Yeah. Ours is really small. Like, I never wanted a wedding in the first place, mm -hmm. right? Just because, like, it's just so much time and effort right now when I'm, things are, like, there's so many moving parts in my life right now. And it's like, oh, to add this other part was stressing me the fuck out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But one of the things I think I realized was, like, my mom just wants to see one of her sons get married, right? Right. So I was like, okay, I have to do this for the parents because she wants that moment where, you know, she sees her son just fucking giving off, giving away her son. So I was like, okay, I'll do that for you. Mm -hmm. And then the funny thing is, like, a few people message, like, yo, I heard you're having a wedding. I was like, when is it? I was like, I don't, why do you want to know? You ain't going. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, well, I'm not going. I'm like, dog. There's 70 people. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to understand the order of importance in your my, in my life. Like, no, absolutely not. I tell people that all the time, dog. We had a wedding of 200, and it was still, like, a struggle. Dude, if I had a wedding of 200, it would still be a struggle. Mm -hmm. It would still be one, right? But now it's just like, okay, I picked the people who I've hung out with the most in yes. the recent years. FaceTime. Right? Mm -hmm. I know that we have a lot of history in the past, but we see each other once a year, maybe. Yeah. Right? I still love you a lot. But these recent memories and things I built with the people now, they have to be there mm -hmm. because it's just it's just proximity too. You know what I'm saying, dog? There were people that I hadn't literally hadn't seen in years that were like, as soon as that engagement shit went up, they were like, "Oh man, can't wait." I'm like, "For what? what? Yeah. <laughs> For what? Like, oh, uh, like, like what, what do you mean?" I'm like, and I had to tell them, "We don't talk." Yeah. What makes you think I'm gonna fucking it costs us money. Yes. Like, I'm, what makes you think I'm going to pay for your fucking uh, filet mignon and for you to come party on my shit, dog? Like, I don't. We're not friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and even for the people, it's like, are we good? I was like, yes. In my case, it's like, you are a good friend. Mm -hmm. However, the list is 70 people. That's, a, that's, that's tight. You know what I'm like, saying? Tight. That's yeah. Extra time. That's yeah. split between two, by the way. Exactly. That's what people forget. You know what I'm saying? So technically for me, it's only 30 people about for me, and she gets the other 40. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you got to understand, this list was very difficult. And then you know, I, I had to break it down to people for them to understand. Like, <laughs> even if a wedding of 200, right? Half and half. That's 100 for me, 100 for her, right? Got cuts it down. And then you got family members. So that, let's say I got 20 family members. That's That's... Being uh, considerate, right? Mm -hmm. uh, then you have a list Your of- Your parents, friends. Yes. Well, yeah. Then there's a list of- So that's like 80 now, right? And then fucking- Everyone wants a fucking plus one. So mm -hmm. that's like 40 people, you know? Because if it was just the people that we knew, not their plus ones, makes it so much easier. Mm -hmm. But everybody has a fucking plus one. Well, the rule is- You know what the rules are? What? The rules are, um, if it's like a new girlfriend and boyfriend, they don't need a plus one. Oh. 100%. Yeah. yeah. I, had, I had like, there's a couple of friends like, oh, what about my girl? It's like, never met her. She ain't coming. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you don't have to come. There's plenty of people who want to take your spot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They want free food, some drinks, and dancing for like a night to get away from the kids. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go. They're like, no, I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, good. Then then we're straight, right? Yeah. So don't don't do that. You know what I mean? I literally, you know, um, so your wedding is a, is a no babies wedding, which is what a lot of weddings are, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so it's your wedding. And then I think my boy Super Ego, his wedding's the next week. So, oh, yeah, it's like your wedding, then his wedding. And so uh, we're going to have uh, Chia's sister fucking fly down from Canada to watch the baby so we can go turn up two weeks in a row. It's so funny because, like, you know, I'm like, I love Veda. I love, I was like, I, I kind of want to want them there. But then we were so small. And then one of my other friends was like, I was like, hey, I'm sorry, but you can't bring the nephews. And then she goes, she's like, fuck them. Like, she goes, <laughs> oh, she's like, I'm coming out and I'm fucking having fun. I was like, if you would have invited my fucking kids, I'd be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, my bad. She goes, don't fucking invite kids. JR's wedding, it's funny because JRA, um, his wedding, he was like, all right, so it's a, it's a no kids wedding, but we really want to see Veda. So you can bring Veda. <laughs> <laughs> so our, like it was like Veda and one other baby at his wedding. That's hella funny. Cause Veda's like, you know, everyone loves her. Well, she was so cute at that fucking wedding too. And her little dress and everything. It was so fucking adorable. And now she's over here like, mm, no. <laughs> the chicken, you God. saw that. <laughs> I was like, that's fucking Chia. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. That is 
That was all Tia right there. I don't know no. where that comes from. Um, I don't know when she became such a picky eater. They say when they turn two, they get super picky. That was the, actually the first time I'd given her a whole drumstick just to chew on. And then um, the clip before that, she's fucking chowing down on this one piece. I hand her another one. And that's when I caught that. No. <laughs> I've literally seen Chia do that with food, though. So it's so funny. Like, they pick up on <laughs> the smallest things that you never think they were going to pick up on. Yeah. Like, why that? Why is that the thing she picked up on? <sighs> Man, uh, what did she start doing the other day? That's, like, so funny. Um, <laughs> I've already told you about the when you uh, – now she knows what farts are, you know. Tight. If you fart, she goes – like, if you're playing and, and you fart, she'll – like, if I fart, she'll go, Daddy farted? Daddy Sorry. farted? <laughs> and, uh, and um, oh, this is so cool, dog. So for whatever reason, Veda loves scary shit. Like, we were putting on, like, kids' Halloween videos during Halloween, but she continues to ask for that shit. Like, six months after Halloween, she wants to watch the ghost song. She wants to watch the zombie song. She wants to watch all, like, the little creepy Carly pumpkin shit, right? So what she does now... Is she'll go, Daddy, Daddy, run. And then, so she wants me to run around, and then she does this. And she oh, walks like around a, like a zombie. Crazy. Like she's a little zombie. I go, ah, Veda zombie. And she goes, and she walks like this with her arms out. And sometimes she'll stop and she'll go, Daddy, zombie. And then so I'll switch, and I'll be the zombie, and then she runs. Let me Isn't that tell you weird? Something. And three years from now, she's like, get the fuck away from me. <laughs> Don't three talk. years? When she's five? Mm -hmm. oh. I'm done. Don't touch me. She's already like that. Daddy, go away. Oh, yeah, that's right. Daddy, sleep. Go away, daddy. Daddy, sleep forever. <laughs> daddy, die. Daddy, die. <laughs> daddy, die. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, am I waking up to that? Yeah. Daddy, die. <laughs> so you start joking her. <laughs> daddy, die. <laughs> daddy, everything lies. <laughs> I like how she's Miss Swan from the <laughs> 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 Uh, what's it, guys? Thanks for watching another episode of the No Chaser Podcast. Wait, what the fuck? No Chaser, who the fuck is that? I it's mean, Genius Brain. <laughs> yeah, Genius Brain. Baby. Thank, thank, all right, guys. Thanks for watching Tiger Belly. This is uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm Timmy Lee and uh, <laughs> and I'm uh, David Kalila King. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Why am I the lady? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's the dudes behind the food. D -d 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 dudes behind the food. Yeah, it's the dudes behind the food. That's actually really fucking good. Today's podcast is brought to you by Tractor Beverage. And let me tell you, you know we love eating and drinking on this show. And Tractor Beverage is delicious. And it's probably because Tractor makes certified organic non-GMO drinks the clean way. Think organically farmed beverages with no artificial ingredients, no phony colors, no mystery preservatives, and no pesticides of concern. Okay, now I'm sipping this peach craft right now. And it is delicious. It tastes like a whole peach in my mouth, all right? And... That's why. Y'all need to check it out for yourself and go to OrganicImpactTracker.com. It's so refreshing to see a company doing this. I'm telling you, it's delicious. It's refreshing. Call me a fan.